Dearly beloved, welcome to, I think this must be about the 30th-ish installment of Thriving in Business Without Social Media. I've been touring this workshop virtually for the last year and a half. We've had roughly 5,000 creators, entrepreneurs, and coaches go through this workshop. It seems as though a lot of people would love to escape the social media matrix and, uh, I'm guessing that's why you're all here, is that you would love to to just kiss social media goodbye. And that was that was my case in the earlier days. And so today I'm gonna share my brief story of why I left and what happened when I left and the strategies that I had to figure out to grow my business the last seven years without social media. And then we're going to get into, there's 19 relationships-based marketing strategies. And when we get to that part of the presentation, you're going to probably take some fast and furious notes. We move through it quickly because I want to make sure that you have time for Q&A and coaching at the end. But all of the strategies that I share, these are strategies that we are currently implementing at Magic Media and Magic Kids that we implement for our partners and the people that I'm coaching inside of the Magic Mind. So these are real world examples of exactly what you can do to grow your business and never ever need to log on to social media again. Does that sound like fun for everybody to figure this out, to get off of the social media hamster wheel, to not have to ever post on that infinitely deep expanding wall that just wants to take your best stuff and push it down the feed so nobody ever sees it. If that sounds good, that's what we're here for today. So let's dive into the presentation here and i will be doing during the midpoint of the presentation i have a very short shameless pitch about an upcoming training but uh i'm sure that'll be interesting as well my goal is that you learn the whole way through this adventure so here we are you can all see my slides oh sorry i pushed the wrong button there uh that's the one Okay, here we go. So, thriving in business without social media. This is me watching the folks over on the side of the cliff doing their social media thing out in nature, as, as humans do these days. So, my first question is, why do you wish to escape social media? If your why is not big enough, there's a good chance that you're not going to make the necessary changes. So, share in the chat why you want to leave social media. What is the biggest reason that you're like, the reason why you showed up to this today and you're giving me one hour of your time, what is that reason for you? Share in the chat. I've seen roughly 5,000 people go through this training and believe it or not, the reasons are almost always the same. You don't want to sell your soul to appease the algorithm. It's time wasting. Gonna go do something and then you get caught in the algorithm black hole. You don't know how to leave. Feels like unnecessary competition. Oh, you don't know how to do social media. I understand now. Feels like unnecessary competition. Curious to see if you have some new ideas for you. I hope I do. Uh, it's breaking your brain, addiction and anxiety. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. And that is the truth for so many. They punish you on your critical voice. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons to want to leave. So just be honest with yourself. On a scale of one to 10, how much do you enjoy being on social media? That's, that's another question. It's like, how much do you actually like being on that platform? On Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever they are. A zero. Shady. Five out of ten. That's actually really high for this workshop. Usually it's four or lower. So Boston says a five out of ten. Four out of ten. Amazing. Amazing. And yet, we still do it because... You know, back in the olden days, social media was actually kind of cool. I enjoyed it back in the olden days before they changed all the algorithms and made you have to pay for traffic. But things have changed. Times have changed. It's a different thing than what it used to be. And I think we can all feel that, sense it, and know it. So for me personally, I left social media seven years ago, actually almost eight years ago because my son just turned eight and I kind of date it based on his, his birth. So... I had this experience. I wanted to leave for about three years before I finally made the leap and got off social media. But I had this one experience after my son was born, we just launched a new branch of Magic Media. Uh, we built this course called the Grady Course Adventure. And in my career, it felt like the first time I had ever merged my inner entrepreneur and my inner artist 
and my inner teacher and coach and brought it all together. We built this amazing online course and it was like Saturday Night Live meets um, <laughs> Saturday Night Live meets like an online course adventure where we're teaching you to build the best, greatest online course you possibly can by merging creativity, entertainment and and teaching. And so I'm, I'm blissed out. I'm watching the sun go down. And as I'm watching the sun go down, I just I caught myself thinking in Facebook speak. I was already pre-writing the post inside of my head. And in that moment, I am catching myself in my head thinking in Facebook speak. I was like, oh, my God, these thoughts are not my thoughts anymore. Mark Zuckerberg owns my thoughts. Mark Zuckerberg owns my experience. And that was like it felt so invasive inside of me as I caught this experience happening. And I was like, that's it. I came home. I told my wife I'm leaving and I don't want to be on social media anymore. I reached out to all my friends. I got the contact info that felt important and I deleted my account. And that was weird. Leaving the matrix was very weird. And I think this is why most people don't leave. But before I share what happened, I want to just share my reasons for leaving because I think they might resonate. Rather than connect us, it divides us. And now more than ever, that was, I think, seven, eight years ago. It wasn't nearly as divisive as it is right now. Rather than being inspired, we feel more anxious by engaging on these platforms. Rather than building friendships, we get followers. And if we really think about that, it's kind of weird. It's a little bit twisted. Rather than creating more connection, we have more loneliness. I don't know what happened to my thought cloud there. It must have disappeared. Rather than feeling safe to share our thoughts, we censor them. Or this day and age, this wasn't the case back then, they get censored for us if it's not in agreement with whatever the status quo is on that particular platform. And rather than being free, we become addicted to our devices. So those were when I made my list of like why I need to justify leaving this platform. Those were my reasons. And leaving was so strange. Now, you would think that, you know, I had thousands of people follow me inside of this social media platform and you would think people would call you think they would text me you think party invitations would still keep coming you would think friends would reach out and ask how i'm doing why did you leave nothing nothing it was crickets it was literally crickets for ages and that was a really bizarre experience for me as a social creature now we just moved to salt spring island a few years before that so we're still finding our our way in the community we're still finding our vibe and our people and so it was very very confronting to realize that i'd invested 10 years of my life into these online relationships and when my family got sick nobody was bringing us soup from facebook Nobody was inviting us to parties. There was nothing. It was literally crickets. And so I realized that I had to take it into my own hands to build real community and real village in the real world. And what I learned from village building over the last seven or eight years has directly applied to the business models that I'm going to be teaching you today in that section of the workshop. But essentially, I started a men's group accidentally called Man Ventures. We've been meeting for over six years. Every two weeks, whatever guys show up, decide on the adventure that we do the following week. And it's been an amazing way to build brotherhood. We do work parties for each other. If a guy's having a baby, if their family's having a baby, we'll go chop their winter supply of firewood. My wife built a mama community as well. And it's done a great amount of good for our local community of 10,000 people. And I've learned a lot about building community in the real world. And if nothing else in this workshop, I want to just stress the importance of real world relationships, even when you're doing business in the online world, because when shit hits the fan, it's your real world connections that are going to show up for you in your life. And that's so essential. So for me, I really just went all in on remembering how to relate with humans. And one of the things that I've figured out over the years is that the world doesn't need more social media. We don't need another new platform. What we need is more real world connection. We need more social connection. 
We need to be connected to each other as people because that's what humans do naturally. So my question for you, my first question is, how many hours do you think you're spending on social media per week? So write that answer down in the chat. This is, this is your opportunity to be honest and truthful with yourself. How many hours do you think? And that's posting, scrolling, that's watching, typing, commenting. Margaret, zero, way to go. You've weaned yourself off. Deborah, three hours per week. So you're looking at 12 hours a month. 15 hours a week. Yeah, I mean, it happens. 10 hours a week. I would say out of the, the four or 5,000 people that have come to this workshop, it's, it's roughly 10 hours a week. So you're looking at 40 hours per month. And the thing is with social media time is time sort of just escapes. It's elusive. It's really easy to log on to send somebody a message and then all of a sudden we're death scrolling for hours and hours or at least 30 minutes. It does happen. And so the question is, remember we asked why you want to escape. Well, let's just pretend you escape tomorrow. What would you do with the extra time? Whether it's 10 hours a week or three hours a week, what would you love to put three hours a week into? What would you love to have 10 hours a week for? This is a really important question because if you left and when I left, there was this giant vacant hole in my life. And I had to fill it with things. I filled it with community. I played golf six days a week at sunrise. I had more time for adventures. I had more time for my family, more time for my friends. I filled it with all the things that I thought I was missing out on. So what would you fill that time with? Me more people on the street. What else would you do? More gardening and business planning. All that's available right now. Painting and landscape. Beautiful. Come up with the list, because if you do decide to make the leap, and I'm not saying any of you need to, if you do, though, you're going to need to know what you're filling that time and space with, because if it's just boredom, you're going to reach back for the phone and go scroll. Hikes and park time. Beautiful. So for me, seven years later, my work days went from nine or nine to 12 hours a day. It was a different phase of my business as well. I, I didn't have the team I have right now. But my work hours now are on average six to six and a half hours instead of the typical nine to 12 that I was doing back then when I was on social media, probably because I was wasting a few hours a day doing social media. I've generated more revenue every single year with my company since leaving. I've grown it year after year, more time for my family, my friends. I play professional golf as my hobby, which is a lifelong dream of mine. Like it's just... When we take back our time, creativity, our attention, our energy, and our focus, a lot can get done. We can do a lot more in a lot less time. And so here's your magic formula. Something I made up, it's a very simple formula. How much money do you think you make from social media? So that's in coaching clients, in sales, programs, etc., from the relationships and all of the posting that you do. How much money do you make? Is it $1,000 a month? Is it less? Is it more? And you're just guessing because you might not be tracking these numbers. So let's just pretend. <laughs> yeah, 0 0.07 per hour. Zero again. Zero. Yeah. I mean, most people that come to this workshop are spending 10 plus hours per week and they're making roughly $0 a month in revenue. That's very common. So don't be hard on yourself. So let's just pretend you are doing 10 hours a week and you're making $0 from your time on social media. Well, you divide that up and you're basically getting paid 25 bucks an hour. Do you charge more than $25 an hour for the services that you do, for your coaching, your teaching, your programs, all the things that you do with your business? Are you charging more than then $25 an hour. If the answer is yes, then you can see that you're wasting your time. You're wasting your energy, your creativity. You could hire somebody for 20 or $25 an hour to spend five hours a week doing your social media posting for you if you wanted to keep those channels up. If you're not making more than $100 an hour with every hour you spend on social media, it's a hobby. And 
it's a waste of your time if it is for your actual business and you're trying to do your business and grow it. So how do you do business without social media? Every year at New Year's, I pick a word to help theme the year, to help me focus my energy on something that I want to get better at. And the first two years after leaving social media, I had the same word. Can anybody guess what that one word is that I put a lot of focus in? Any guesses? The one word, connection, it's very close. Community, also aligned, but not quite the same word. Friends, yeah, I mean, that's also in alignment with what the word was. Love, this is also has to do with it. The word was relationships. Remember, I wanted to remember how to be in relationship with real humans in the real world. How do we do business through relationships? And so that brings us to the 19 relationships-based marketing strategies that we're going to dig into right now. And so this is where you get your pen and paper ready. So number one, the most important, if nothing else, email marketing. We all know you should have an email list. And my strategy has really changed over the years. I used to send out an email once every week or two. I now email my list two or three times a week. Think about how much the average person posts on social media. You're coming up with content all the time. You're coming up with stories. You're thinking of clever things to say, pictures of yourself, videos, etc. Two to three times a week is actually not much compared to what the average person who's going all in on social media is doing. And these are not just like asking for sales. These are, I'm sharing clips from my coaching sessions. I'm sh sharing templates. I'm sharing all this valuable stuff with my email list as my way of building trust and keeping that connection. So you want to treat your email list like gold. You want to be sending them goodness in their inbox at least once a week. I would recommend twice a week, but once a week for sure. That is your relationship. And if you didn't make it, yesterday I taught a um, an origin story workshop around storytelling and using storytelling as a way to, to bridge connections, to teach, to inspire, to transform lives. I'd recommend checking that out if you weren't there yesterday because storytelling is such a beautiful way that you can be connecting through your email list with your audience to keep them inspired and engaged in your work. So email marketing, number one, double down on that strategy. It sounds simple, it sounds obvious, but for most, it's one of the things that gets neglected is we forget about this beautiful email list, our direct connection with the people who have actually given us permission to hear from us. So email marketing. Number two, design a signature workshop. So what is a signature workshop? Welcome to my signature workshop. This is it. It's a 60 minute presentation and you deliver the same workshop again and again and again. The idea is, is it's a new audience's first experience with you. So a lot of you who are here today, this might be the first time you've ever experienced my work. And you craft the one workshop and then you tour it again and again and again virtually. As I said, this is probably my 30th, maybe more time in the last year and a half of doing this exact same workshop. I keep tweaking and improving it, but it's the same workshop. And, and the reason is, the reason this is so effective is teaching's your best marketing. You can do this workshop, you create your signature workshop and you can literally tour it and I've grown my email list by over 5,000 people as a result of this. And I've invested, let's just say, 30 hours of teaching time and maybe 20 to 30 hours to building my systems and doing all the communications. So 50, 60 hours to grow my email list by upwards of 5,000 people. Think about that for a moment. When was the last time that 50 or 60 hours invested into social media give you such a return. And we're just talking about the email list size. We're not talking about the revenue that's generated from growing your email list, the revenue that's generated from people coming and experiencing you for the first time and deciding to sign up for a program or coaching or partnerships or whatever it might be that you're selling. And so with your signature workshop, there's four ingredients that go into it. Number one, your story. So you're sharing a bit of a backstory. Now, I wasn't expecting that thriving in business without social media would be my signature workshop. 
the first time Tad Hargrave from Marketing for Hippies asked me to come teach this workshop, I was like, sure, I'll come tell people what I did when I left social media. And so that, that was the first version of this a year and a half ago. And we had 1,100 people sign up for that one workshop. And I was like, holy cow, I think we're onto something. So I then started reaching out to other people, be like, I've got this workshop. We had a lot of people sign up. Can I come teach to your community? And then all of a sudden, it just snowballed and kept expanding and, and it still keeps growing. There's still a huge energy around this workshop. So I was like, okay, great. So you heard a bit of my backstory and now you're getting to understand a bit about my philosophy and how I approach business and how I approach marketing. The third thing that is really important in your signature workshop is you give people their first experience. You help them have a breakthrough, you help them have an epiphany, you get them a result. So they walk away feeling like, well, that wasn't a waste of time. That was actually really valuable. And then at the end of it, you call them to adventure. So you can invite them to your coaching, a program, your membership, whatever it is. And those are the four things. And it's a 60 minute workshop. Once you put it together, it's just about tweaking and refining and trying to make it better and more valuable for the people that come every time you tour it and deliver it to new stages. So for those of you who are interested in this, I'm just gonna take literally three minutes to show you. We have a training coming up here um, and it is starting in uh, September 12th. So if you know Tad Hargrave from Marketing for Hippies, he and I are collaborating on this. Now, what's really amazing about a signature workshop is you make it once and you just keep doing it again and again. So here's here's the training that we're doing. Um, it's essentially in 90 days, we're gonna support you to design. You're going to go through the entire process of creating your signature workshop, delivering your first signature workshop, getting a whole bunch of building your hub list so that you can take that on tour. And then we're gonna show you how to do all the things like build a media page. So when you build a signature workshop, once you get going uh, and you start reaching out to people and they say yes, you wanna send them to a page like this that gives them all the information, the pre-written email, their affiliate links, their social media posts, and all the things required for them to be able to promote your signature workshop. So we show you, you actually get templates on all the outreach emails and all this stuff. So Tad, he grew Marketing for Hippies in the early days by just touring his Marketing for Hippies 101 signature workshop. When I was touring, I used to teach meditation. I taught over 500 workshops and I used to do tours as well, teaching a, an intro workshop. And that was how I grew that. It's the simplest, most scalable strategy for growing your email list and therefore your revenue. So it's going to go from September 12th to December the 5th. And Tad and I will be co-facilitating each session. It's a session every two weeks. Each session is two hours long. You're going to get all the templates, landing page templates, email templates, media page templates, etc. So you can fill in the blanks and be on your way. And I'll post this link inside of the chat for those of you that are interested in this. There's also an online community. I'll be coaching live in the community every single day where you can post for feedback, get feedback from the, your peers. Uh, we already have, I think there's close to 40 people already registered. It's coming up this September. So we're going to have a big group and it's $7.95. And the we've been doing this. This was an experiment. If you like pricing experiments, this has been a really successful one is we're doing a rolling early bird price. So in April, it was $5.95 and it goes up by $100 every month till it gets to the full price of $9.95. So if you join before July 1st, it is uh, $7.95. Or if you join my Magic Mind community, the training's included as well as all the other things. You can just explore this in your own time afterwards. So that's the training. If you're inspired by this signature workshop and you want to get off social media, this is the best way that I could possibly encourage you to go ahead and, and craft and tour a signature workshop. I wish I would have known about this long, long ago, but that's life. We have to go on the journey to figure out what we know now. So that is that. Take a peek after the workshop and let's continue on with our 19 strategies. And if you have any questions about that training, you can ask later on. Oh, what happened to my slides here? I lost them. That's not the right thing. Hold on one second. Let me 
see. Sorry, everybody. The my thing went missing. There we go. Okay. So the next one, if you have a content library, so as I said, I shared, I, I did 500 meditation workshops between 2009 and 2012. I then produced a world-class audio meditation library with a buddy of mine, Blair. And in, in that process, I was like, I want to get these meditations on. It started with Mind Valley. If you know Mind Valley, they had an amazing app called Omvon. I was like, I want Mind Valley to publish my audio tracks. They said no the first five times. We kept making our tracks better and better. Custom composed music, really high quality vocals. Finally, they said yes. I ended up being their number one meditation guide on Omvana for over six years and running. That alone got me started with like, oh, licensing. Who would have thought? In the last seven years, I've generated hundreds of thousands of dollars in pure passive income. I've had millions, multiple millions of people listen to my audio tracks. When I go on some of these platforms, you know, I have 10,000 reviews on certain meditation tracks. Um, you can check out. So here's a bunch of the different apps that, that I'm on right now. And what you can do, if you have a content library, you can license your content to apps, companies, institutions. So I know one person, she... Uh, she's licensed a bunch of her courses to like governing bodies. So say you've created a course on, and hers is specifically in as a doula and birthing course, and she's licensed it to some of the big doula training organizations. Licensing is amazing because with my meditation stuff, I felt complete with the chapter of teaching meditation, which is why I created the library. And then I just put it out there. I get a new licensing contract, usually about one a year, I'll, I'll close. And those generate money passively, monthly, quarterly, or annually, like one of them, this Mequilibri one, I've made probably $120,000 from this one contract, I get a check for $12,000 every October. It's awesome. It's amazing. So licensing is an incredible thing. And I'll get into Magic Kids and what we're doing there, because it is also a licensing thing that we do. Um, I did create a course. If you're interested in licensing, it's inside my magic mind. You get access to that as well if the, with the membership. It's a six month training. Next is guest appearances. So every coach is probably telling you, you got to do podcast tours. I would beg to differ. Yes, guest appearances are great. It's a nice relationship builder. It's a nice way to connect with new audiences, but very rarely do podcasts actually lead to expanding your email list. Rarely do they lead to sales. And the reason is people are passive listeners. They're driving, they're washing the dishes. And what happens at the end of the podcast, they might be inspired, they might've loved you in your interview, but the next podcast episode starts and they quickly forget about you. I always tell people, reach out to podcast hosts and pitch your signature workshop. Once they say yes to doing the signature workshop, say, great, do you want to have me on your podcast a week or two weeks beforehand so that we can promote the signature workshop? That is an amazing strategy. That is a strategy I do recommend. Uh, and if they say, no, I'm not interested in doing the workshop, then you'd be like, cool, you want to have me on the podcast? And that's kind of like the backup plan. Guest appearances are great, but you know, they don't work as well. For example, last year I had an interview on the $100 MBA. It's a popular podcast. They get millions of downloads a month. And in the first week of that podcast episode coming out, I had 120,000 listens on their channel and only 20 people signed up to my email list as a result of that. However, I taught that same audience this exact workshop you're in right now and I got over 500 people on my email list in a week. So that just kind of shows you the difference between podcasts and a signature workshop. Next is profit sharing. So Magic Kids, we have we we have the Magic Kids app for any of you parents out there, M A J I K kids.com and we are producing the most epic audio stories, giant music library of inspirational music from every genre, musicians all over the world kids meditations and then curriculum that come with every single story that we put out so kids can integrate the lessons and themes. It is awesome. And I can't create a thousand kids songs. I can't write a hundred audio stories. I do write. My son and I have written 
about 15 books so far, which have also become audio stories. And, and so what we do is we are the first fair pay publishing company and we pay a percentage of our revenue to our authors, illustrators, voice actors, musicians, composers, and educators based on the number of subscribers or revenue we're generating and the amount of engagement with the content that they are contributing. So let's just say you're creating a hub of educational content. You could essentially license people's stuff and pay them a percentage of what it is that you've, you're, you're licensing from them. So licensing is a beautiful way. People don't, or not licensing, sorry. Profit sharing is a beautiful way to collaborate and make stuff with other people. Another example of profit sharing is I used to lead a lot of retreats around the world, like Peru and Mexico, Hawaii. And I would often find ways to partner up with folks and we would just split the revenue that we would generate. And we would all be responsible for our share of the thing that we were doing. And it was a really amazing way to, to just tap into other people's talent it took a bunch of the pressure off of me having to be the one and only guy on the retreat or in the program teaching. And yeah, it, it's a it's a great way. Profit sharing is amazing. So those are some examples. And like these, these apps that I'm licensing my meditations to, they're also a profit sharing model. Next, collaborations. So I love collaborations. I've I would not be where I am as an entrepreneur with my company if it wasn't for creative collaborations. As I said earlier about the, the Great E-Course Adventure, I partnered with my buddy Andy, who was an amazing designer. I did not have the fifty dollars to $100,000 to hire him for a year of his life to do the thing. I also partnered with my buddy Blair, who also composed my, my meditation library. He's an amazing musician, composer, producer. And we did a revenue share split. We all built these amazing products together and we split the revenue. And so maybe you can't afford your dream team, but maybe you can be more creative with how you find the resources needed. Instead of saying, I can't afford to do this, I'll wait until I have the money to hire the people I need. Maybe you just need to create a business plan and you could enroll some key players to support you, to leverage your vision and turn it into a reality much, much sooner. You don't need to have the resources in your bank account today to collaborate with your dream team. They're out there and they're probably waiting for you to come up with your plan. And I've done this again and again and again. I've come up with all sorts of collaborative opportunities. And I will say, I actually need to go back a slide because regarding the profit sharing, um, Magic Media transformed our business model about five years ago and I stopped doing client work. I would feel so burnt out after doing client work. And instead of doing client work, we do business partnerships. Uh, and so Magic Media, instead of say a $100,000 program or a $100,000 contract, we'll do a revenue share with people who partner with us. So they'll pay a retainer for 12 months, which is much lower than what we would have charged before. And we get say 20 to 30% of the revenue that we generate together for X number of years. Usually it's two to three year long contracts. And it's a long-term partnership where we're gonna build all of these different pieces together over the course of a few years. And it's been so satisfying. And we've literally generated millions of dollars with partners over the last five years as a result of this different model. And as an entrepreneur, I get rewarded. I feel really excited and amped up because you know we're all putting a little bit of risk into it and we're all getting rewarded when we win the game. And you know we don't win them all, but the ones that we do, we've really won. And we get paid way more than what we would have if it was a client project. And so if you're a service provider and you have skills or you have a team, that's another model that can really work well is exploring profit sharing. So I just wanted to share that because I forgot on that slide. Profit sharing is a beautiful thing. Next up is affiliate marketing. We all, thanks for letting me know. I didn't realize I wasn't showing the slides. I got it now. Um, so the next step is affiliate marketing. You get people to promote your, your stuff and they get a percentage on anybody that signs up. So there is a chance that maybe somebody promoted this workshop to you. And there is a chance, not everybody that promotes this workshop is an affiliate. A lot of them don't actually join as an affiliate, but they might have had a link that is their link that they you would have clicked on. And if you end up paying for one of my programs, that they'll be paid. 
the thing about affiliate marketing, a lot of people think it's like, it's a little bit manipulative or whatever, but what's manipulative is what Facebook does with their advertising and algorithms. I would so much rather pay a friend of mine or a colleague 20% of my program offering if they're promoting me to their audience who's in alignment with me, then I would give Mark Zuckerberg my $200 or whatever it might be that is a commission. It's just like affiliate market's a beautiful thing. It's a way to everybody can win. You can leverage relationships. And, and if you're doing affiliate marketing, you just need to have the right system set up. So as I showed you earlier, you need to have a media page to make it really, really easy for your partners to promote your offerings with like the pre-written emails, pre-written social media posts, pre-written banners. And in our signature workshop training coming up in September, we we give you that template. We show you exactly how to set all that stuff up so that you can get the attention of partners to easily promote your stuff for you. Next up is sponsorships. This is something we're exploring now with Magic Kids. Strategic partnerships. So let me give you some examples. Oh, my my formatting got out there. Um, so Magic Kids, we've got the app and now we are looking for, you know, it's a lot of work to get individual customers when you're selling a product. What is amazing is when you can get one partner who can introduce you to many, many customers. So we just closed our first large strategic partnership with Soul Shop. Uh, they do social emotional learning uh, work down in the Bay Area school system. And they originally approached us to build an app for them. But then after exploring for a while, we realized actually their content would fit perfectly into the learning mode section of our Magic Kids app. And so now all of the programs they sell in their school system include the Magic Kids app and all of their online learning resources are now roped into our Magic Kids learning mode section. And so that alone will get us into upwards of 100 schools, 100,000 plus families will have access to the app this fall. Over 2,000 educators will have access to the app and it's gonna generate a significant amount of revenue as a result of that partnership. Now we've got a bunch of different licensing partnerships happening right now with a headphones company, baby stroller company, uh, libraries all over the US and Canada, homeschooling hubs, and the list keeps going on. I've hired a good friend of mine and he's now in charge of strategic partnerships for Magic Kids. And that's our mission. Our goal is to have a million subscribers by leveraging 12 to 15 strategic partnerships. So strategic partnerships are amazing. When you have something and somebody else has something, but you're both missing what each other has and you find that sweet spot and you can come together and leverage that relationship and both of you can get more by working together. So for Soul Shop, they had all these school contracts, they had hundreds of thousands of kids in their in that they're influencing and empowering they had thousands of teachers they didn't have a platform they loved magic kids we have all this app we have all of our stories our content everything else we're paying these royalties we've got hundreds of artists that are on our payroll and now it's like oh what if we did this together how much more powerful of a product and offering would that be for your clients how much better would it be for our app to have your stuff inside so that's what you're looking for, strategic partnership. I mean, everybody talks about the win-win-win, and it just takes some creative thinking when you look at a partnership to really, truly find that sweet spot. And when you do, good things happen and money flows. Next up, Free Coaching Fridays. I started this last, I think, September, and I have loved it. I have six spots every Friday available for 15 minute coaching sessions. And if you stay till the end of this, you're gonna get one of those links and you can book me for a 15 minute laser focused coaching session where we work on one really specific thing that you want help with. This has helped me get more clients, more coaching. It's It's been fun and I love it. So I don't do social media. So to devote two hours every Friday to supporting six people, it's fun for me. I love it. And whether they buy something or not, I don't really care. But for you, you know, if you're trying to build your coaching practice, do something similar and and don't make it like a free consultation. That just sounds boring. Make it a results focused thing. For me, I, we're gonna focus on one thing that you want support with in today. One thing, your breakthrough laser focused coaching session. So I highly recommend it. It's great. It was an experiment. I was gonna do it for 30 days and see how it went. And you know, we're almost July and I'm still doing it every Friday.
Next, everybody forgets to ask their family and friends. Ask your family and friends if they have any referrals. Tell them what you're up to. Tell them what kind of people it helps. Ask them if they know anybody that needs support with that thing that you help people with. YouTube shorts, I don't consider YouTube to be social media. It's more entertainment and education. So do YouTube shorts. YouTube uh, really rewards people that are doing shorts because they're trying to keep up with TikTok. So you can build a pretty significant following quickly on YouTube shorts and that's under 60 seconds videos and videos filmed like this, not like this. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of fun. I use an editing software called CapCut and it's great. This takes me into the next one. Comedy ads. We just, uh, last year, we worked with one of the biggest comedy ads agencies in the world, the Harmon Brothers. I love comedy. I love making people laugh. I love writing scripts. Sketch comedy has always been something I've been passionate about. And so when we launched Magic Kids, I was like, we got to try this. So we had budget and we wrote and produced 30 comedy ads with the Harmon Brothers last year, 31 comedy ads. And in April, we did our experiment. We spent about $10,000. These numbers actually aren't right anymore. Um, we spent about 10 grand in ads. And this was our top video right here. And we had, it's actually over a million and a half views now, but our 31 videos, I'll post this link if any of you want to check them out. We had a blast. We've had 2,500 subscribers join our Magic Kids YouTube channel. And now we can retarget those ads. So we're just saving up budget right now to do another big campaign this fall. Um, but I highly recommend it. Like if you've got a funny bone, writing comedy stuff is an absolute blast. It's, it's worth doing because you get to, if you can make people smile, they might stay with you a while, but if you can make them laugh until they cry, they're more likely to pull out that wild wallet and buy what you got. So that's my philosophy. We, uh, you know, we, our app only went live in March and these ads like this one right here, play university. It's, I think it's got a, almost 800,000 views now. Um, I'll just show it to you real quick. Hello class. Welcome to play university. Today, we're gonna unlock the power of play. I'd rather unlock the power of a good nap. First, we're gonna pretend we're in a castle surrounded by dragons. Uh, I see we need an easier game. We're now gonna play a game called This Is Not A Banana. Watch and learn. Love rain, zing, zing, zing. <laughs> Your turn, Mom. Um. This is a uh, banana. Dad. It's a, 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 a boomerang. That was kind of fun. This is a challenging case. We're gonna have to bring out the big guns. Magic Kids, audio stories, music, and imagination meditations. And fun activities too. No, oh, that ad. That, that's my son there. My, my kiddo co-wrote that with me. Um, that we shot that on our iPhone. And that video alone, we spent $300 in advertising. We shut off the ad uh, because YouTube flagged it as kids content. So we weren't allowed to do paid ads to it anymore. And it generated those 800-ish thousand views organically. And that led to probably two new subscribers every day as a result of that one video. Um, and so that's fun. Like we just did that as a family. A lot of that was improvised. I was running the camera. We had two from our team that played mom and dad. Soren was just great. I was just directing them from behind the camera. We got that. We shot the same thing from three different angles. And that was the video that came together. And, and so far it's our winner for comedy ads. So if you like comedy, then write comedy because people are, if you're doing your authentic thing, you're going to have so much more fun. And if you're having fun, your people are going to have fun. We originally actually tried to run all of our, our comedy ads uh, as Facebook ads. And I think karma bit me in the ass because after our first week of running our ads, we invested about $2,000 and then our account got hacked somebody took down our ads, put up their own ads and was putting $5,000 a day towards their ads. And we got our, our account essentially got closed and they refused to reopen it. So we're like, this is great. 
I don't like Facebook anyways, let's go over to YouTube. And so that's where we ran all of our ads. So the, um, the link to our comedy videos, if any of you want to get inspired about that, uh, there it is. You know, if we can have more fun in our business and how we do marketing, it's only going to lead to good things. Okay, so next up, here's a bunch. Have you sent a press release to your local media, magazines, newspapers, TV stations, radio stations, etc.? It's not always relevant, but we ended up, when we launched Magic Kids, we got a handful of, like, pretty decent-sized magazines and newspapers in, like, our local lower west coast of Canada vicinity, which led to some great exposure. Selling in retail stores. We've sold thousands of books at markets um, for Magic Kids. If you have products, like going to markets and trade shows is great. We did this generosity experiment. Um, when we launched Magic Kids, we get we found about eight companies that we love, uh, including the Harmon Brothers, who ended up becoming our comedy team. This was actually how we got our in with them. As we, I reached out and I was like, I love what you're doing. We're this new company. We want to give all the parents on your team a bunch of books. And they're like, that's amazing. That's so kind. Great. Here's the address. Ship them down. So we sent them about 100 books for their collective team. And, and that's what got us the in for them to give us a pretty smoking deal on, on helping us to write our ads. Uh, when I was doing meditations, I used to do workshop tours. And I would choose a city, I would do five intro workshops, I would charge about $30 per person to come to these two hour intro workshops, and then I would sell a several hundred dollar day long workshop at the end of the week. And I would also sell my online meditation library uh, at that time, and I would come home, my pockets would be full of money from doing these workshop tours. So if you have a city that's not your city, because all the people always love somebody who's not who's new to their city coming in, then pick like a handful of studios, reach out, pitch your workshop, and then target that city, go for a week of fun, do a bunch of teaching, sell something more high end at the end of the week and see how much money you can make. It, it works great. And then the other thing is like, if you can find more local partners, do more local focused stuff. Everybody's looking to expand their stuff all over the world. But the way I started my meditation stuff, 500 local meditation workshops, and then it grew from there. So social media, it can work. I've seen it work for plenty of people. And how it does work is you have to have a clear strategy. If you don't have a clear strategy, you're wasting your time. Have a publishing schedule. Do you publish three times a week? Do you publish every day? Do you publish only once a week? Like know that schedule and stick with it. Like I have a pretty consistent publishing schedule with my Magic Media newsletter, with our Magic Kids newsletter. We release new stories and content on the app every Saturday morning to replace cartoons. Next is be disciplined. Take back your mind. Hire a team if you must. You know, again, that $25 an hour thing. Like if you're spending 10 hours a week at that $25 an hour role because you're not actually making money or maybe it's even less, it's a volunteer gig for you because you're not making money, then hire somebody to do that role if you're really attached to keeping your social media up. And the next is Make your work art. So that's where the comedy comes in. That's where being more creative with how you post, the stories that you tell, you know, do that storytelling workshop I offered yesterday. And uh, we use Mighty Networks a lot. We've built, I think, 18 to 20 different Mighty Networks over the last four years. Um, basically, if you have Mighty Networks, it's like having your own social media network where you can offer all your courses, your blogs, your forum. You can have trainings, live streaming, coaching programs. If you join our craft and tour signature workshop program, starting in September with Tad and I, we are, my magic mind community is in a mighty network and that's where that community space will be held as well. So my final invitation is give yourself a gift, reevaluate your marketing strategy. Take three hours in the next few days here to write out your real marketing strategy. I recommend choosing two of the, th uh, two of the different strategies that I mentioned today. And so think about the two right now, put into the chat, what are the two strategies from today's workshop that you're gonna implement over the next 30 to 90 days to replace that social media time or replace at least half of that social media time to see what kind of different results you could be getting from yourself. So share that in the chat. I would love to know which of the strategies work the best for you. Next, decide if social media works for you, your lifestyle, your mind, and your business. Spend a day making a new plan or half a day, as I said, 
leave social media if you must. And oh, there's one more. The most important, which I don't know what happened to the slide there, it's protect your time and consciousness. It honestly, it feels like there's a psychological war that's been inflicted upon humanity right now. Whether you believe that or not, it's up to you. But there's a lot of negative shit that's being programmed into humanity's consciousness. And we need to be protective of our time, our creativity, our consciousness. And we need to make more art in the world. That is our biggest responsibility and job these days is like bring beauty where beauty is not. And there's a lot of places where beauty is not. And, you know, you're all doing beautiful work in the world that is important. And so... If social media is not something that's serving you and serving the people that you're looking to help, like it's just, just leave and do something that's better and more aligned. Again, here's the workshop details. I'm going to post some links um, in the chat. This training only happens once a year. So that's a reason to join. If this is aligned, if you do want to create your signature workshop, this happens once a year. Um, and, and it's amazing. And then the other thing, my magic mind community, which includes that training until July 1st, I'm doing a summer magic special, which was on before you all join my list probably. Uh, and it ends July 1st as well. So it's a hundred dollars off per month if you join that subscription. So finally, uh, there's going to be a PDF that reminds you of these 19 strategies. I'm going to post that in the chat. And, uh, if you can share the link to this on your social media, cause I'm not on social media, so I can't. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what are you gonna change? What are two things you're gonna change? That's the most important question of the day. Cause if nothing changes, you're gonna keep getting the same results. And that is my shtick. And I'm happy to uh, spend, a, you know, five, six minutes answering some questions if you want coaching. And here's all of the links to the things that I've talked about today. So the first one's the signature workshop training. Join before July 1st. The next is my magic mind. Uh, if any of your parents or grandparents, check out the Magic Kids app. The comedy commercials are there. The free 15-minute coaching link. It's first come, first serve. And then uh, if any, any of you are at a stage you're looking for partnerships, then you can check that out as well. So hopefully, hopefully there's some nuggets there that are helpful. Uh, Boston likes 15-minute laser coaching sessions and signature workshop. Beautiful. And... You know, Boston, you live in San Francisco. No doubt, there's no shortage of locations that you could teach your signature workshop in person. And last year, I did I did several at like community work hubs. I would just go do a lunch and learn at the work hubs. I'd reach out. They would invite me in. I get put up for free. They would, you know, they would serve pizza to everybody that was there and I would get to teach my workshop. It was amazing. So Virginia is going to double down on email marketing Deborah likes the coaching Fridays, use of comedy, guest appearances. Great. And guest appearances include a uh, signature workshop. Uh, Margaret, mightynetworks.com is what you can check out. You can essentially build your own social network, online community. Um, it's You can do courses, you can do online trainings, you can have private groups. We even, instead of using Slack, we use Mighty Networks for all of our team management stuff for, for my Magic Kids and Magic Media teams. Mercedes says, I have only a very, very small email list besides all the people I know, but sometimes they get angry about mailing them. So small-minded. You know, if if they're getting angry about you emailing them, then, then just take them off the email list. Essentially, when you have an email list, um, it's people have given you permission to send them emails. And as long as you're not just being spammy and salesy and you're actually providing value in the ways that you promised when they sign up to your email, it's fair game. People will unsubscribe if they don't wanna hear from you anymore. And that's that's perfectly fine. And if you need to grow your email list, then design an epic signature workshop that you could take on tour virtually. And in 2025, tour that to 30 stages and you will have thousands of people on your email list. It's just the way it works. I've seen it work again and again. We've helped clients to build their signature workshops. It's just, it happens. You know, like last week I taught a signature workshop and my email list grew by 300 people. The summer series. So Tad, uh, Tad and I are doing a summer series. I forgot to mention that. Um, we are offering six free workshops. Uh, I'll post that link as well. If you're looking to, if you're curious about the signature workshop, but you're not ready to dive in, 
Uh, yesterday was the first in that series. You can sign up on that page. The recording from yesterday about the origins origin story workshop is there and all the other ones are there. If you sign up once, you're included in all those those events. Does anybody else have any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand or ask in the chat. Uh, so Margit is gonna focus on your email list and get clear about what your commitment is to your readers, what you can promise, type of content, frequency, and communicate it to your list. Amazing, I mean, that sounds, that sounds great. And if they don't want what you're committed to, then uh, then that's fine. Just just go. You know, and the best way that any of you are gonna get really good at teaching and coaching is the more you do it, the better you get. Like I taught 500 workshops in three years. I was teaching three, four times a week and I got really good at feeling nervous, sitting down in front of a group of strangers and guiding them through a transformational process because I just did it again and again and again. And no two meditation workshops that I was teaching then were ever the same. It was like always based on whatever was going on inside of my life, whatever practices I was most geeking out on and whatever the energy of the group was that was there in front of me. And sometimes there was only two people in the room and sometimes it was 50 people in the room. It just kind of depended on the day, the place, the time. So, you know, teaching all the time. I had somebody yesterday on a workshop ask like, am I ready? Should I be doing this? Like, yeah, because the right people are going to show up. When I started teaching meditation, I thought I felt like a fraud, but people were getting results. They kept coming back. I'm like, okay, it must be doing something right here if they keep coming back. And then my confidence built over time. So if you want to get really good, then teach as often as possible. And instead of waiting for other people to book you to teach, fill up your schedule with teaching opportunities. And maybe one people person will show up. Maybe five people will show up. But fill your own schedule up before waiting for other people to book you. That's how it starts, you know, like just, and sometimes like I'll launch workshop ideas all the time. Like last year I launched a, a comedy create, a comedy writing training. Nobody signed up. I'm like, no harm done. <laughs> Moving on. But then sometimes I'll have a training like already with the, uh, with the signature workshop training, we have close to 40 people who are already signed up and we're still a few months out. So it's just like, it's hit and miss. Follow your passions, follow your interests, follow, listen to what you're noticing and the content that you're putting out there, the stories you're telling, the way people are responding and follow those threads and create experiences for people. You know, workshops don't have, they could be hour, they could be two hours, they could be day long. Get creative, have fun, give yourself permission to just like put on your teacher's hat and wear it fully and book up your calendar teaching and inspiring people. It's the best way to to grow your list, to market what you do. You'll get referrals more often if you're teaching a lot. And obviously you're gonna make more money if your schedule is booked up with teaching opportunities. <clears throat> Any other questions here? What is a sponsorship? So sponsorship, um, let's just say you're putting on a local workshop. You're gonna teach a, a local workshop and you find some local businesses that wanna sponsor the food or they wanna sponsor the drinks, uh, or let's just say you have a podcast and you get a thousand, a thousand downloads for every episode. Well, you could reach out to a microphone company, you could reach out to a live streaming company and be like, yo, I get this many people who tune into my podcast every week. Uh, do you wanna hook me up with some gear and I'll make you one of our sponsors? And they give you gear, they give you cash, and and you say, hey, this episode sponsored by such and such, uh, by, road and that's whose microphones we're using here and if you need a new microphone go check out road so that'd be a sponsorship you're partnering with other businesses and they could either pay you they could compensate you with product and you're giving them exposure or they'll compensate you with cash any other questions nice so mercedes is gonna make more youtube videos with tips to get less stress and better health so try and geek out, find other coaches that are doing really cool YouTube shorts. If you're going to make YouTube videos, I recommend YouTube shorts at, to start because the videos are under 60 seconds. So you have to get really good at sharing a really clear and powerful message in a creative short period of time in order to get people to pay attention. And so it's a great way to grow your audience and your list. 
or not your list, your audience, your audience on YouTube. Um, it will grow your list in time, but it's not really a great list growing strategy, but it, you can build an audience on YouTube so that as people pay attention to you and you have something coming up that you want to pitch them, then they're more likely to watch that and then click over and, and check out the offering. Uh, when is too soon to develop your signature workshop? I mean, if you feel like you're wasting time on social media and you consider yourself to be a coach and a teacher, now's the perfect time to develop a signature workshop because in a year from now, after delivering it 20 or 30 times, you're going to be phenomenal at that workshop and you'll be ready to design your next signature workshop. And, you know, I think this year for me, I'm developing a new signature workshop, which is around turning your life's work into a work of art. And that's like, how do we get more creative as creators and entrepreneurs with the work that we're doing so that more people want to pay attention, so that more, more people are drawn to our work. That's what I'm working on behind the scenes right now. I feel like having three signature workshops eventually is where I want to get to so that I can just offer those quarterly to my audience and my email list. And then when I pitch people, on, uh, like pitch hosts to host my workshops, it's like, here's three different workshops and maybe they'll book me for all three of them throughout the year. So that's what I would say. Um, you... If you're teaching, you should have a signature workshop because your signature workshop is going to help you really refine your storytelling, really refine your point of view and your unique philosophy. And it's going to help you to start facilitating more transformations for more people. It's going to bring more people to your work. Even if you don't have a whole bunch of offerings right now, maybe you just do coaching. Well, you're going to get introduced to way more people that you can facilitate a transformation for who are going to be interested in your coaching. It's also going to help you grow your email list. It's going to help fill up your other programs as you develop more programs. My philosophy is ABC, always be creating. If you're always creating, you're always improving. If you're always improving, everything always keeps getting better. If it keeps getting better, people are going to just flock to you in time. But we have to make a lot of things. We have to go through the, the stage of not being great to becoming great. I tell my son, and it's one of the messages in, in The Master's Apprentice, one of our Magic Kids stories, is to go from good to great practice every day. Even if that practice is just in micro doses. Practice every day. Do you keep a recorded version of your of one of your signature trainings for people, like a webinar that somebody could could watch on their own, on their own time? As in like this workshop that we're in today? Yeah. Like yeah. This, this goes up on my YouTube channel. It goes in my podcast. Every time I do this workshop, I post the newest version on my YouTube and podcast. So people don't have to sign up for the live version, but I think most people want live these days. That's what I've been noticing. The last couple of years, people want to be here live. They don't want to watch a pre-recorded thing because it's just too easy to get distracted. Uh, if you're still figuring out your niche, I mean, we cover that Tad's teaching a whole, a whole module inside of the training on your niche, like choosing your niche and topic. And, uh, next Friday, the actual, uh, for this event series that Tad and I are doing, we're doing a workshop on choosing your niche and topic for your signature workshop. So there, yeah, come to this event. Cause that's, that's going to help you dial it in even more. And if you're if you're unsure, just reach out to Tad and ask him, hey, do you think I'm ready for this? Here's what I think my niche is. Does that sound like it's the right thing to do? But what I've found personally, I mean, I've I've taught so many workshops, so many classes over the years. I'm 20 years in as a, an online creator. Like this is my 20th year and I've done everything. I've tried every type of business model. I've tried every type of creating, memberships, communities, like all the things. And the simplicity of it, it's so simple, but the more you teach, the better you get and the more clear you get about what you're actually teaching. If you just keep waiting till you think you're ready, you're not actually getting the experience of facilitating and teaching people. And so many people hold themselves back from creating experiences for others to come into. And you have to just like, you have to give yourself permission to have an idea and inspiration act on it, follow all the way through, teach something you've never taught before. Like yesterday, this origin story workshop, I'd never taught the workshop before. I probably put about 10 to 15 hours into creating the workshop, designing the slides, 
I was super nervous going into it because it was a new workshop. I didn't know how people would respond to it. I was telling three personal stories that I hadn't told before. And it was it was stressful. And I was I was a little bit worried that it might suck or that it wouldn't provide the results that I was intending and that people thought they were signing up for. And we had like 90 people there live yesterday. And in the end, I was like, I was pretty stoked. People seemed really stoked. The chat was just on fire. So I would just say you have to just get over the hurdle of waiting to feel ready and push yourself over the edge and start teaching and trusting that the right people will come. That was one of my doses of medicine. I mean, think of me. I was in my mid-20s and I was teaching meditation workshops to people who are three times my age. And I felt like, what right do I have to be teaching this? But they kept coming back because they loved it. And so we had like, and the other piece of humbling medicine that I received back in those days is like, I'm paying my rent by teaching people meditation. And when only two or three people show up to my workshop, I can't come into the session feeling disappointed that only two or three people showed up to my workshop. I have to serve and show up with as much energy and presence and enthusiasm, whether there's three people, 30 people, 300 people. And that's one of like the, that's just a part of the, the evolution that we're all going to go through. And so the question is, is are you a teacher or are you not a teacher? Are you here to teach and inspire people or are you not here to teach and inspire people? And if the answer is yes, I'm a teacher and yes, I'm here to inspire people, then the next step is obvious. Give yourselves as many opportunities as you possibly can to do that again and again and again and again. Even if it means teaching the exact same workshop 300 times, just do it and then just keep improving. I hope that's helpful. That's, I mean, it's... It's the only way to get better. You know, you think about it. If you're teaching once a month versus you're teaching every week versus you're teaching two or three times a week. And we could call it teaching or coaching or creating videos, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, the more you do it, the faster your evolution gets and the more, the quicker you'll get to where you're trying to go. That's like, you know, there's no hack. It's just do it as often as possible. Make the, you know, like the 10,000 hours to reach mastery. It's just like, do it as often as possible. Pick up some strategies along the way that help you improve and accelerate the growth. But that's the only way to go from good to great. It's just like, do it as often as possible. That's my, that's my soapbox for this anyways. That's been my strategy and it's, it's worked pretty well. You know, I follow my threads of inspiration I don't question them. I trust in them and I just go for it. And oftentimes it works out great. And sometimes it doesn't. And I've learned through 20 years of having plenty of disappointments, setbacks and failures that that's just the, that's the game of numbers that we play. We're going to try a bunch of things. Some of the things are great. And you know, this workshop that you're all at today, this wasn't expected. It wasn't a part of the plan. It just kind of unfolded as it unfolded and it's become very popular. All right, so we're 10 past the hours. There's one more question that anybody wants to, to share. I'm hoping this was uh, valuable for everybody, that you got some inspiration, that you've got some next steps that you're going to start hashing out and thinking on that you can take back your power from social media and realize that it's just a smokescreen. You don't need it. You don't need it for your relationships. You don't need it for your wellness. You don't need it to feel connected to the world. You could walk away today and be better for it if you wanted to. Just focus on relationships. How do you be in relationship with people? Being human again. Beautiful. Well, I hope to see you all in September. I hope to see you throughout the summer months that these other workshops Tad and I are leading. And uh, let me know how things go as you make some decisions and make some changes. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for being here, everybody. Thank you. This was excellent. Awesome. Glad to hear. Glad to hear. Take Thank care. You. Bye. Your kid's awesome. <laughs> I love him. He's awesome. Fun being his dad. <laughs>